What is up everybody, Dan and the Fireman here. Today we're actually gonna be out on the road and we're gonna be talking about some of the things that I just wish I would have known when I first started riding, be a little more efficient with my gear choices, maybe be more efficient with my, my training and everything. So I wanna get you guys on the right path right away and that's what we're gonna be doing. But I'm gonna hop on the bike because I wanna do something different. I wanna go riding and have a good time. Let's do it. All right, so while I'm setting everything up, I just want you guys to understand that this right here is a distraction for new riders. I am picking a road that is not gonna be too hazardous in terms of factors. And once there are factors that involve me being a little sketched out and being an orange stage, uh, you won't even notice because I edit those parts out. So uh, do not read and do not ride at the same time. These are just bullet points for me to kind of stay on point. Because you guys know during the live streams, I get a little uh, squirrel. So let's go ahead and get started. You notice the road's nice and clear. Let's go ahead and get going. And boom, side of the vehicle, a little concerned about that. I'm gonna switch lanes and we're gonna go ahead and talk. All right, so what I wish I would have known when I first started riding to make it a little more efficient is buy good gear as soon as you can. Now, what I mean by that is make sure you get the gear that's gonna last you, okay? A lot of people, what they do is they go get some really cheap gear. Maybe it's not the right helmet size. Maybe it's not even the, the type of protection for jacket it is. Maybe like it's super hot out all the time in your area, like in, in Tucson, Arizona, and you got yourself a winter jacket because it was on sale, but now you're dying in the heat. So make sure you get the actual gear that you can actually wear uh, the first time. And I'm gonna tell you guys that because the gear that you get the very first time, like a helmet, jacket, pants, boots, all that stuff, it can last you five years easily. So make sure you get the quality gear you can. So if it costs you another $30, $40 to get the helmet that is right for you, do it because it will last you a long time. Same goes for gloves, pants, jackets, and boots. So buy good gear as soon as you can. When it comes to gear, also think about, let me go ahead and switch over guys. They got somebody coming up behind me. I'm looking at my mirrors doing 360 spatial awareness. Gonna give myself the best line of sight and escape past the left and possibly that lane. Anyways, the next thing is get motorcycle protection. Motorcycle protection is very important. So if you're a brand new rider and you're out riding around practicing, doing all these different things, what you wanna be doing is making sure that if you drop your bike, it's not gonna be the end of your training session. And then more importantly, it's not gonna be an expensive thing to replace, okay? So levers are pretty easy to replace. You know, if you get some breakaway levers, it's a red light going and start applying progressive brake pressure and downshifting and get myself in a good position, making sure everybody's behind me, everything's doing good, gonna get myself in a lane position so that if somebody does do anything crazy, they will hit this trailer instead of me. And uh, if you're out practicing, that's the thing is you wanna, if you drop the bike, you're gonna wanna be able to keep it protected. So frame sliders, just in case of a low side in the middle of a turn like this where you hit a pothole, or if you're doing parking lot practice to practice your parking lot skills, which you can get for free on ddfmcrew.com, uh, free parking lot exercises there. But uh, if you're gonna be dropping the bike slow speed, let's say under 15, maybe 10 miles an hour, you're doing your U-turns and you, and you dump it, you break a lever, replace it. But if you have breakaway levers, it'd be even easier. Also, if you have crash guards, it just lands on the crash guards. If you have an exhaust guard, it just lands on the exhaust guard. So those things can be easily replaced versus an actual exhaust versus an actual gas tank or a crankcase, all these different things. So think about that. Think about getting engine guards. Think about getting uh, frame sliders. And then think about it the next step, like just after you get out of that beginner stage or as soon as you possibly can, get yourself really good motorcycle insurance that's gonna cover everything, okay? Different insurance companies use the words comprehensive, full coverage, like it's you know, you know their own thing. At the end of the day, what you wanna do is get what's the bare minimum of what is uh, required in your state. And then from there, go ahead and choose the next steps that you think is more appropriate for what you do. If you have a brand new bike, more than likely you gotta get the, the cool, full complete coverage, you know, whatever your insurance company calls it. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So to be a little more efficient, uh, your first bike might not be the one bike that you want. Now, it might be the bike that you've been waiting for and really wanting, keep an eye on the Audi behind me. Uh, it might be the one that you're looking for. Let's say you're into sport bikes, you get yourself a CBR 300R, which, you know, you can win anyways on my giveaway, but more on that as on the ZDF and Crew website. Uh, let's say you went and got that, but you're like, man, I really want to outgrow it. I really want to do this. I really want to do that after a couple uh, months, maybe years. And you just realize, you know, that's not your, your only bike that you could possibly get. Remember, bikes are used 
for the purpose that they are intended to. So uh, let's go ahead and give some examples so you guys can understand where I'm coming from. When I first got a bike, my very first bike, first everything was a brand new 2012 Harley Davidson Nightster, which is a Sportster model at the 1200 level, 1200 cc's, and I absolutely loved it. I changed it up, I moved it around, I made it cafe, I made it scrambler, did all these different things. And then finally, after years, I traded in for the beautiful Indian FTR 1200S. And guys, I've had a KLR 650 during that time. I have the Rebel 500, which is actually Nikki's bike. And then I got the CBR 300R as the beginner bike giveaway. And I'm starting to realize, you know what? <laughs> Bikes are just tools for fun. So do not worry about getting a different bike from the first bike you get, okay? So don't be super duper attached, but at the same time, love the bike that you have, bond with it, do it, everything you need to do so you're a better rider. So when I first started riding, I started to you know, hear about, oh, with well, the front brake is 70 to 80% of your stopping power. You should only use your front brake, blah, blah. And I actually started thinking about that, but subconsciously, I was actually using the rear brake. So at the end of the day, I still got what I needed to do. But I know a lot of people are out there like, well, if it's only, you know, 20 to 30% rear brake power, you know, the stopping power, why even use it? Well, here's the thing, it's gonna help you out, especially as a beginner with those slow speed maneuvers. So when you do counterbalancing stuff and you're all like zigzagging, doing U-turns, figure eights and all that stuff, you could do it without the rear brake at all. But the thing is, it can really help you out, especially with different types of bikes, okay? You can counterbalance some pretty easy bikes, you know, like this one right here, mid controls, rear controls. Counterbalancing is pretty easy, but when you get those forward controls and you have your feet way up here, it's kind of hard to press those, uh, the pegs and everything. Sorry, I gotta pay attention. We got a red light up here. Gonna go ahead and get in this lane and position myself so that I don't get hit. All right, it's a green arrow, but just because it's green does not mean go. Gonna still uh, navigate this area with debris on the road. Looking for anybody turning left, going to look right, look left, get good body position, and aim for the one road, one lane that I needed, and now we're gonna accelerate out of it. And wave to another biker, nice helmet, dude. But anyways, uh, the thing is, those will help out the slow speed maneuvers, the rear brakes. So the thing is, with that rear brake, it's really gonna help you out when it comes to your balancing out on the bike. So with those forward controls, if you can't apply too much counterweight, what you can do is apply a little bit of brake pressure and stay almost in line with the bike and still do a lot of direct steering to make it to where you can actually do those slow speed maneuvers. So don't negate and don't think like, you know, the rear brake is no buenos. It really is side of the vehicle, double checking, make sure everything's good. Now back to yellow stage. Uh, but you definitely want to do that. You want to play around with that rear brake, try it out. And it does apply really well to cruisers. So once again, different bikes, different center gravities, different rakes and trails and all those things. All right, we got somebody here going to go ahead and apply some uh, progressive brake pressure, look around, I'm going to position myself for success. And I think I was supposed to stop at that light or that white line, but you know, whatever. All right, so we're gonna just jump into the next one. The next one is make sure you keep up with your tires, okay? Your tires are the only thing that really touches the ground outside of your feet. And we could talk about gear at some point, make sure you get some good tread and make sure that they actually, you know, stick to the ground and not slip and sliding when it comes to asphalt or anything like that. But anyways, uh, keep up with your tires. So whenever you're about to go ride, just do a quick glance, you know, go to the front, go to the back, go back to the front. Go ahead and double check, make sure there's no damage to the sidewalls, make sure there's no damage to the actual tire, make sure there's no nails. Last thing you need is you're about to go on a 50 mile ride or whatever and you have a nail and you never noticed and then it flies out at mile 20 and now you're kind of screwed. So uh, that's what you want to do is you want to check for any damage. Also another thing is keep up with your PSI, the pounds per square inch. Oh geez, that was hard for me to say. And you want to keep up with that, keep an eye on this Ford. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, you want to keep up on that because that is going to help you out so much when it comes to handling, braking, swerving, everything, because that is basically your shoes. It's like running around with flip-flops uh, as fast as you possibly can, playing like soccer or something with flip-flops if you have underinflated tires. And then it's almost like running on a track with football cleats uh, when it's overinflated, you want the right shoe, right everything for the what you're going to be doing. So keep up with uh, the on the side right here. It's actually the uh, the pounds per square inch, the recommended psi for your tires. So follow that. It's going to be on your stem. It's going to be next to your VIN and everything. Or follow the owner's manual. That's going to really tell you what you need. And if you have tires that are different, mismatch. The thing is, you're supposed to get the tires that fit the bike, not specialty tires that have completely different PSIs, okay? The bike is the bike is the bike. 
and you need to get the right shoes for the bike, okay? All right, we got a lot of people going in and out. I'm gonna get out of this right lane, position myself so that I have the best line of sight, best escape paths, and then also making sure that people can see me, okay? So space cushion right here is good. I like this guy here, like that guy there. I got some people behind me, but I can escape to the right or left if I had to. And one of the things that I want you guys to understand, I've been bringing these uh, whole situational awareness things up, fundamental skills. That's part of being a smart rider, okay? So I'm wearing full gear also. I don't need to rescue anyone and go ahead and present myself orange stage very good uh, and I'm teaching mentoring you guys but that's the thing guys get coaching because what you don't know you don't know okay so that when you go out and get a class you're gonna start learning these new things you're gonna hear things that you've never heard before they're like aha that makes sense I can start applying that to my motorcycle riding so go out and get coaching as soon as possible in fact before you even start riding go take an MSF BRC1 they will provide you a motorcycle you'll possibly be provided with gear I don't know how it is right now with COVID but more than likely you're going to get a helmet and gloves all you have to do is wear long sleeve pants and uh, decent boots and you can actually play around on a motorcycle low cc bike with instruction and decide after that do I want to ride okay making sure this guy behind me is not going to be too much of a problem I'm just going to switch right here so I have good line of sight once again so he has good line of sight and he can make decisions so go ahead and take that class guys really it, it, that's like your trial period you know you don't want to spend five grand on a bike when you could just get you know I think at most like 300 something dollars for two days of instruction and riding around and you get your endorsement so that's actually really cool you get your license so guys go out and get coaching because like I said you what you don't know you don't know so those are some of the things that I wish I would have known if you have any please write in the comments about stuff that you wish you would have known and trust me these five are not the end-all be-all these are just some of the things that are off the top of my head and uh, the thing is I just want you guys to ride safe be efficient with your riding and understand that you know what this is a lifelong learning process you use it or lose it and coaching is probably one of the easiest things to do to get that continuing education all right guys with that said hope you guys ride safe be safe and i'll see you around